This is the working file, so bear with me here. Um, oh boy, all right. Can we see that okay? Yes. So this is what we've mocked up. I've added the tour date that Chris provided me. Um, I did. Sorry, can you zoom in at all? Just different sections or? Sure. Oh, yeah, much better, great, thank you. So a few people kind of emailed thoughts about feedback. I don't know if people want to speak specifically to some of their comments. Um, Caitlin, I know you had some thoughts about maybe rephrasing some of these um, headers here. Do you want to kind of speak to your thoughts there? Yeah, I think, um, and I know you, I know we are short on, um, like space, uh, I'm, I'm happy actually, like I was wondering if, if you have like a text file of these, I can go through and try to just cut, uh, just like to, to edit, to, to get you some more space. I think that some of the, um, the, the headers don't, don't, they, they kind of sometimes sound more like an enhancement rather than fixing an existing problem. Yeah, they're inconsistent. Yes, and that I think that having the headers all be like clearly coherent existing problems that we're fixing is um, a better way to, to kind of reach people in the community that might not understand like that these aren't these aren't this isn't all a wish list. This is this is these are needs. Can you give an example? I'm not sure I understand. Yeah, I think like. Uh, can you scroll down? Oh, the modern classrooms to support contemporary teaching methods. I think that's something that I that is is exactly the kind of thing that uh, people who were perhaps educated in a different time period could like write off as unnecessary. But uh, you know, modern classrooms that meet Department of Education requirements and so is is more concrete. And it infers that our current classrooms don't. Uh, Sprawling layout. Do they not? Size wise. Size wise, they don't. Can I? Yeah, I know where you put. Do you mind if I? Because um, when I read them, they appeared a little inconsistent. I didn't know whether we were going at problems or solutions. Mm -hmm. And so when I, I read it from a solution set perspective, I go, okay, we're working on security, safety, and security. And uh, 
flow of vehicular traffic and we want modern classrooms. And then I got this sprawling layout and I went, oh, that's a problem, not a solution. So then I went back and started reading it from a problem perspective. And then the modern classroom to support contemporary learning became inconsistent to me because basically, if we take it from a, a problem perspective, it's uh, classrooms that not that do not um, uh, enable or support uh, um, contemporary teaching style. I understand. I mean, I read this as all problems. Okay, so then they have to be stated consistently as problems. Okay. And even separate cafeterias is more like, uh, you know, ensure cafeterias are right size for the number of students. Or I don't know. That, I, that, I, don't I mean, think I think it's obviously there's a limited amount of text. There's only so much you can say. Yes. But it's a serious problem. Right. But I don't know if that yeah. makes it sound like a serious problem. Because you don't think you don't, so. I think that we know that because we know how bad the cafeterias are. But if you are just mm -hmm. like a, a I mean, regular sorry, or if you're an older, older person who's not as familiar with the school, we don't have kids in schools, mm -hmm. you can read that. Two fancy cafeterias. Like, no, we have serious scheduling issues. Like, also, you write it just out of curiosity. I, I said some. Um, so, if it's taken from a problem perspective, uh, the cafeterias um, um, uh, uh, impact scheduling and impact student schedule or yes. something like that. So, current cafeterias that impacts the. the uh, student scheduling. I mean, and to the point. space issue, I think a, a more clear problem based header, you just, then you can take away that big paragraph. What do you mean? Like the, the very few people, like the modifications to the nurse's office, you know, changes to nurse's offices to ensure student privacy and safety. Like you can delete the whole paragraph. Uh, if you have a more coherent problem based header, which more people are going to read anyway. Yeah. And I also like that it, the way you said it, it puts it in a positive versus the nurse's office lacks this and, and it's so, so all of them are a positive statement about what they accomplish versus, again, it's problem versus but solution. They, yeah, but they, they also clearly kind of say, sure yeah, people know more. that the nurse's office is really bad. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. why would they know? Not that they know. I won't, I'm saying we should be negative in a sense. We should. These are problem statements. This is a problem. It's a yeah. real problem. The, so the, the nature of the current nurse office. That's true. Remember, we're it's establishing a, a series of right. information. Right. So we're right. establishing problem, and the next one can be solution. Our oh, solution. Right. right. This isn't the solution. These this are the problems. problems. I get it. Okay. So I, do, I do agree on being just Curry consistent works. across the board. Next, yeah. next to Curry. Emily, for the the sake of efficiency, we probably can't wordsmith in this. Yeah. Do you have a sense of what we're looking for? I guess so. What I'm unclear about is is the intent then to delete the paragraphs and only have headers for each one. I don't want to have them be different. That's where I don't want some to have a paragraph and some to not. I agree. Uh, no, I think they have to. They're effective if you could have the sentence after, but maybe we can make them more consistent to to the people's point here. And then yeah. Around the problem, you know, these are problems. Yep. These are legitimate problems. Right. As quickly and quickly as possible. Why are they a problem? This isn't about how we're solving them. Yeah. No, I I agree with that. I definitely think it needs to be what is the issue. So, all right, let me play with some wordsmithing. It'll. Sometimes it's tricky to find a way to make it all fit, um, but I will do my best. Corinne, I saw your hand. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I agree with this, just um, making sure that we're highlighting what's wrong instead of providing solutions. So, for example, the one that kind of tripped me up was sprawling layout and support for collaboration is kind of a plus and a minus. So we would probably want to say lack of collaboration space rather than... Yeah, yep, so I agree with that. Anyway, I agree. Thank you. Can I say something, Corinne? I, I understand what you're saying around that, um, but there is a lot of people out there in the world who isn't going to understand why that's a problem in a school. We got to put it, uh, go to uh, 
the greatest population in uh, the largest population in Cape Elizabeth has probably not entered a school in a number of years. And so what is it about that that is the problem? I, it's I, like they aren't conducive to learning I at like this it. point in time. Instructional time is lost. That's the problem, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Wasting time. That's simple to understand. I think people yeah. understand that, right? It's, I like it. I like problem statements. Problem statements. Yeah. These are the problem. These are the problem. So yeah. I think with that lens, if Emily could go back and any of us want to go back and help focus some of these? I think we just want to avoid the perception that we're going to the Taj Mahal schools. Mm -hmm. Like, we're not. We're well, solving. Let's not talk about this isn't solutions. solutions. Problem. Let's focus on problems. Right. But the, yeah. making sure that we are, yes, not, I think I've These are impediments well, to yeah. instruction yeah. and yeah. education. These are real problems. Yeah. And I mean, to your point, we have collaboration space. And I, I think it's okay. And I think people do understand that there is, you know, because it's meeting space, it's group mm -hmm. student workspace, it's it's a lot of different collaboration, it's a lot of different things. So I think it's hard to mm -hmm. find an alternate phrasing that kind of reflects all the things and spaces. So I think we have a general consensus, which is a nice thing with our group, with our um, problem statements, Emily. So we'll work on that and I will provide more feedback. I okay, I think I may try and generate a Google Doc of some kind. So people yeah, that's, that'd be perfect. Okay, what, well, if we can quickly go down on the page and just see if there are any other comments on this bottom section, I'll make it. Were there any comments or concerns regarding this portion? I thought this was good. I like it. Yeah, I like that. I think overall it's very good. Um, I think we're close. Mike, so what I was wondering is, so we're, we're, paying, we're gonna pay for this full page um, I don't know if everyone here, I know some have, um, were able to review sort of the expanded version that, that I had drafted up of, of the need. I know it was pretty long. It was great. Um, yeah. Thanks. Good. But I was wondering if the courier would consider um, printing that in its entirety or close to its entirety alongside our paid ad. So that you can get a high level view, but if you want to have a deep dive into these challenges, wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be nice? You know what I liked about what you you wrote, and you're you're a great writer because you brought it to some words that people will understand and can grab onto. Yeah, I I would support that. I know I'm not a person that would go and read it, but there are Anyone. people out there who will. Um, and especially if they're getting, they see the ad, there's a focus, and then they hopefully on the next page over. Right. Right. And they have been spending enough. So. I mean, they've been, they have been running whatever when we give them press yeah. release. Right. They are running last. So. And it was a night, they put the last press release in, that was half a page. That was nice. So well, yeah. they should like us. So I think they do. <laughs> that would be my recommendation yeah. is to submit, to ask them to. to I know it could take up a couple pages, but it would be nice to have the, the full deep dive. And, um, and we're good with that. Um, yeah. I also want the greater public. There has been some criticism that we haven't understood the needs. I think we understand the needs. We've been focused a lot on the needs. Coming up with that draft is not very challenging because there's, so much, there's been so much work to draw upon from Chairman and. and I also think, managers, so. I also, also think it's a wonderful piece because as we move toward the next survey, that's a huge education piece. Absolutely. Huge. Absolutely. And and we're gonna to get to the survey and you know, there's a lot of things to go over there, including what to include alongside the survey to describe the, the yeah. various options and solutions and the, you know how we address the needs, et cetera. So um, so I think we're, Chris, are we good on, on I'm good. I will ask uh, the editor of publishing that as a press release. So okay. Great. Thank you, Emily, for your work. Appreciate it. Uh, Cindy, I think we'll hold off on the draft communications plan now since Bruce is here. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry about um, that. Before we 
dive into Bruce, though, um, I think it's important, um, and this will be a little teachery, but I, I think it's important uh, that everyone on the committee gets to say what outcome they're hoping from this survey and any questions, concerns they have about it. So Bruce has a full picture of the whole committee um, and where we're at. And it, I just ask we try to be uh, succinct in our what we share and everyone's gonna have a chance um, because I, I wanna make sure we all get it out there and then we can come to some consensus to help guide groups that's- yeah, and, and there's, there's two, I think there's two parts of this discussion. One is there's two options that Bruce has presented in the in, in the um, in his updated proposal. One's basically an online version versus a, a, a mailer to every registered voter in town. And I think we should discuss the pros and cons of, of each of those. Um, well, that's one to make sure we're on the same page for that. We need to finalize that agreement. And then the second piece is, is what Chris just referenced. So let's let's get this out. Everyone's gonna have a chance. So your major outcome you want from the survey, and you want SBAC to have the survey, not yourself, SBAC. And then well, I'm gonna ask that first, and then we're gonna go to concerns or questions. So what outcome do you want? I'm gonna start. Uh, Corinne, are you on? Yes. Can you tell us what outcome you want us back to get from the survey, please? Yeah, so I've kind of dialed it down to three things that I think we've talked about in previous meetings. Yeah. And the first the first one would be to evaluate our communication. <clears throat> that is to get an understanding of how successfully we've communicated our work. Um the second is an opportunity to educate. So for people who have not seen anything that's happened so far, you know, they'll be getting a mailer with images and data along with questions. So it's an opportunity for them to be prompted by questions to look at our material and kind of get educated that way as a way okay. to drop people in. And the third is to take a temperature of what the community is thinking and gather feedback. The thing that I am worried about is that we are taking a vote that will you know, bring bad feelings to the community if we decide to go in a different direction. That's my main worry. Thank you. I think I have those to go different direction. All right, uh, Larry, are you on? What are you, what outcome are you hoping for for SBAC and then any concern? Yeah, thank you. Um, I, I I think the survey should be fairly clean, concise. Um, but what I would look for <clears throat> is um, uh, repeat uh, the question regarding uh, the level of uh, taxation that individual taxpayers would be willing to support, um, get input on um, preferences for the three options, or, or and that also should have an undecided or don't know. And uh, as Corinne said, get some feedback on um, the information that's been supplied to the public by our committee to get uh, a read on uh, th that uh, aspect of our uh, success or lack thereof. Um, we're in a very tight schedule here, and there's only so much that we can act on. And so I think those are the key areas that I'd like to see covered. Thanks, Larry. Any concerns? about it or worries? Well, I, I I think we need to try to do this as efficiently as possible and uh, keep the cost under control. Um, yeah. One thing we'll discuss with, with Bruce. <clears throat> and, and also, um, we just want to make sure that, um, that this is seen with urgency uh, by those that re receive it. And if we, we, we send it to every registered voter, um, we need to emphasize that it's very important for people to respond within the time frame that uh, Bruce specified so that we, we get a good, valid sample. So those would be two of my concerns. 
Thank you. Who else is online? Um, Tim? Good morning. All right, I'll come back to you, Tim. Um, let's see, in the room here. Penny, what happens are you holding for? Okay, I just want to say right up front that I'm finally happy to see a teacher with really bad penmanship. Oh, I got a D minus in penmanship. So, that's, so, that's why I became a superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to thank you because I have horrible penmanship. Horrible. Um, I agree with uh, Corinne on um, we want to test the effectiveness of our, our, our communication and our meetings and you know, all our dialogues. Um, and um, I think somebody mentioned that so if I wanted, um, if we are going to put out there a uh, preference uh, round of options, how well are they understood? So if, you're, if you have a preference, how well do you understand it or what's your rationale right. for uh, selecting it? I'd like to have a um, uh, understand a relationship between knowledge and um, and option. So it might be a little repetitive of what I just said. Yeah. Um, and I would like to have an understanding of what people are willing to pay on a monthly basis for uh, school solution. Is it forty five dollars, twelve dollars, or seventy five or a hundred okay. on a monthly basis? Any concerns, worries? Uh, I I think. I think my greatest concern is similar to Corinne's that uh, they, there needs to be a firm understanding that all we're trying to gather are uh, preferences and understanding and rationale for why people are going in the direction that it is not the determining factor for direction that we might go. Thank you. Patrick. Um, mine are a lot of the same as everyone else's. Uh, where we stand with our education in the community. Um, but people understand what the needs of the schools are at this point. Um, I'd even like to put in there when was the last time you were in a capitalist school? And the reason for that is if that becomes a problem, maybe that's something that we really need to, um, I know it's pain in the butt to get people walking through the school, but maybe that's something we really need to reach out to the community and do. Um, things I don't want to see and do not want to see, which one of these three things do you want? Um, at this point, I think it's too early for that. Well, can I add one? Anything can happen. Go ahead. See your time, Patrick. Uh, I can see my time. <laughs> I want to know. Um, my biggest worry is, and maybe there's a question we can put around it, is the doing nothing. I worry about that. You mean the cost of doing nothing, the implications of doing nothing? The, yeah. I, I hear people out there who say, I don't want to do anything. We know there's going to be some survey. Right. Michael, we're going to get to see it. What do you want to get from the survey? I pretty much would agree with everything Annie said. She stated it well. Um, there's been a lot of changes since our last survey. The, the evaluation is out. I think people generally understand the impact that's going to have on their household. I want to know how that's changed uh, the financial realities on the ground here. Um, I want to know, based on our, the transparency of you know, cost and our transparency on the process, the DSBSC, is that improving people's perception and willingness to invest? 
there was a public comment in this morning or last night, I can't remember, I saw it this morning, um, reminding us that 38% of people voted for two new schools yeah. last time. That said, uh, the actual cost, had we improved that? We know that it was much closer to 200 million. So I want to know 38%, we need to get at least 12%, hopefully much more, you know, supportive of whatever project. So for me, this is all about the, the main thing here is that we, we need to know what people's comfort level is, both in terms of the cost and the impact on you know on their own on their own taxes. And if it was not for that, I don't think there'd be any purpose. There'd be very little purpose uh, to make this kind of investment. Any worries? Yeah, my, my main concern, even though it's more expensive, you know, is that we need to reflect what the, the voters that are going to come out in November. We know that's going to be a huge high turnout election, so we need to reach everyone. Uh, and so for that, even though it's quite a bit more expensive, I would support um, uh, paper surveys that reach every single support. Uh, I agree every single support, every single registered voter in, in, in town versus doing an online survey. Because we know from the last survey um, that um, online survey takers um, are a bit different than the general demographic. So that's it. Uh, I agree with uh, a lot of what I'm saying. Specifically, I think, uh, and that's the, the meat of it, is I think that the mentality that we get in the survey is actually to understanding uh, the education level of the public. Not, not even necessarily how effective our communication is, but just the actual, like, what do people understand about the schools? Um, and specifically, I I think it would be difficult to get, but the most valuable information you can get is if you don't support one option, what could move the needle for you? Like, what, what, is, what is your specific concern about that option? Because that could inform our communications after, if we end up choosing something that we think some people in the public aren't happy with, we could, if we have knowledge about why they're uncomfortable with it, we can use our communication to try to assuage those fears in the lead up to the election. Um, so, in my opinion, the, the, the survey that's focused on understanding how people feel about the option is really important. But my biggest concern is that we do a straw poll, essentially, with the survey, and then we undermine the committee's ability to use our expertise to make a decision. And so, instead of gathering information to figure out how we can best position the option we choose, we will instead to just have only gathered information about which position the public wants us to choose. Uh, and I think that that's a nuance, but it's an important difference. I have one other concern is that what happens if for some reason all three options are overwhelmingly negative? <laughs> what do we do? That's not good. Again, if we have if the survey is all about understanding why people think the way we think, what that becomes is there, instructive to how we there absolutely has to be open-ended questions. I want to make sure we can, can answer that before we have a discussion. Just, just sorry, then, sorry. Before we have a discussion, make sure everyone gets to share. I think Tam, are you are you out there? Are you able to share? Can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Yes, yes. Uh, sorry about that delay. For some reason, I wasn't able to get in on that other link, so I'm on my phone with this now, and I had to go through a little extra gyrations to get my speaker un unmuted. Uh, one of the things that I would like in the survey somehow to to let them know where some of the information is. Uh, you know, we're going to be doing these ads in the Courier, and hopefully Michael will be able to have a press release going along with them, like the one in... The, the press release that just came out in this most recent courier, it was almost a half a page. And there was a lot of information in there. And I've had a number of comments from people that they, they found it very, very re readable and very understandable in going through the, the options that we still have. So somehow keeping that 
uh, and possibly also in the survey, uh, making sure that it's easy for them to find where our website is for additional information. Um, and then I do think it's important to get some, whether it, I know Patrick doesn't want to vote, I don't want to necessarily vote, but we got to get some kind of a sense out of this survey of which one of the options they'd most likely support. I mean, we are, we are going from, we're good, this is, it's going to guide us to go from three to one. <clears throat> so I'd like to see some kind of guidance coming out of this survey for that. And one of the things I think we've got to kind of get some kind of a sense on, uh, you know, I've, I've talked to different people on the, our, our committee, and it, it seems like um, in order to make E uh, a little bit more uh, affordable financially, get it maybe under under a hundred. It's gonna it's gonna almost require us to do little or nothing at the high school and the elementary school. And if somehow we could get some, if if that would make E a doable option, but basically do nothing or little at the other two units, I'd like some guidance on that one because uh, in fact I talked to Penny about this yesterday. If if that's something that that the, the community would support. Uh, I think it could make it a more viable option, but I'd like, I certainly like some feedback from the community because I think doing little or nothing at those other two units, especially the high school that we've been, you know, from 17, 18's plan down to now, it's just a, a steady, it would be a, a steady decline and, and, and there are significant, there are significant needs at the high school that need to be addressed. Any concerns, Bill? Well, just the concern that I have is just uh, uh, just a timing. I mean, the, the timing we can't we can't help. I mean, it's it's now uh, we've got to get this feedback. We, we we need to get some guidance from it. And I just feel like there's there still is a lot of people that are not paying too much attention to this. There are a lot of people that are not even in town that are going to be voting in November. So, however, we can make sure that this survey gets out to all of the, I don't know, roughly 7,500 registered voters, um, uh, that would be critical. Thank you. Cindy. Okay, um, I'm not sure how much new stuff I have to add. I think I'm kind of in alignment with, um, you know, Penny and Vernon and Caitlin. I think this needs to be an opportunity not only to gauge what um, our effectiveness as a communications committee, but also to um, just get a sense of, of what people know. And I think, I actually do think we're in a, a great position because we have the prior survey of the benchmark. So we can really measure how they've moved by being, you know, being able to compare to September day. Um, I think, you know, we want to get a sense of I, I agree on people that have concern about this not being a straw poll. And I think you do want to get a sense of what people are willing to invest given what their investment will give them. So um, uh, my concern with that would be, you know, we put three pictures in and there's this expectation that if they choose that option, they get exactly what that picture shows. And we're so early in the process I, that that would be a concern, but um, I think we do want to get a sense of uh, the effectiveness of our communications and also how well people understand the needs. And there's, I think it's good, you know, there's, there's some nuance between doing that too. Um, I, and then lastly, the, I, I think it's important that if we are making this significant investment that we, basically maximize what we can get out of it. So, um, and this is both a concern and a, a desire because I think the concern would be spending, you know, 20,000 plus on a survey, which is like the equivalent of 20 full page courier ads and not using it as an opportunity to educate and inform as well mm -hmm. and not getting data uh, from it as Caitlin said, to be able to evaluate and plan our communications strategy going forward. Thank you. Lisa, anything you want to share? Uh, 
couldn't find the unmute button. Um, in regards to the, the survey, I think uh, I just want to echo what other people have said that trying to collect as much information to understand where people are at to help inform your next steps is really going to allow you to build off of the three options and arrive at a option that speaks to those um, areas to which people are either concerned or support it or support. Um, and it will allow you to uh, build off the process that you've laid out thus far. Um, so trying to collect as much of that information, and understand what the concerns, uh, areas of support, and not necessarily the option, but the components thereof. Um, and I just wanted to uh, comment on something I think Patrick had said about um, asking when was the last time folks have been in the school. I think that's really important data to understand. Um, and um, even, I know it's tough to get people to tours. We've seen other communities do videos where they highlight the needs in a video or they do a day in the life of a student or a day in the life of an educator so that they can walk the community through those challenges that they're experiencing on a daily basis. Um, so just things for consideration. Um, and then the other thing in regards to the ad, um, you may wanna consider a two page ad if you don't get the um, press release in there. One thing that will do is allow you to do them side by side. So you have the graphic on one side and the detailed explanation on the other, make it easy for people to access all the information in one place and be able to look back and forth between the two pages. Thanks, Lisa. Chuck, anything you wanna add? Sorry, um, no, yeah. I'm all set. Yeah, sorry, I clicked the wrong button. Um, good morning. No, uh, I agree with Lisa. I think the key is to, to find out any way you can how much people are actually engaged and understand what's going on. How much are they following what you're doing? Um, I mean, that that's always been the leading thing is to make sure there's there's your message is some somebody said be before that your message is getting out there and getting heard. So I think to, it's all about communication and out, out, outreach more than it's anything else. Um, you know, that the rest of it, I think, once it gets out there, is going to be them starting to read and understand what the options are. So that, that those are my biggest takeaways that I think would be most helpful. I think we capture this. I saw Bruce here taking notes as well. I'll make sure these get written up with excellent penmanship. <laughs> That's um, why you have a word box. Yeah, this is why I became a, a doctor, just a doctor, <laughs> just the wrong type. <laughs> so we got there, a hand, there is a hand raised. Um, oh, okay. Try to go ahead and then Bruce, I'm gonna yep. go to you and kind of what did you hear and anything else you want to hear from us. Go ahead, okay. I just would note there's one community comment in our chat for whenever we get to community comments. Um, also, just one thing more that maybe we want to put in the worries column or just things that we need to communicate. I just want to make sure that we word somehow that the three options in the survey are not final. So whatever the final option is will be an iteration. Um, just so that people aren't disappointed if they select, you know, seethe and it doesn't turn out to be the same thing as what they selected. Yeah, just to show that we're still in process and in flex. Thanks. Yeah, I, uh, I wanted to second that. Cindy made a good point to that to that end as well. That they are subject to change, and that it's not a vote. Those are my huge references at this point in time. So, but Bruce is the expert, so he will. I'm sure. I just had one one observation that this is probably the best mechanism we're going to have to put the needs and the option, the solutions to every voter in the town. We, we have our best shot at delivering this information with a separate sheet that can accompany the um, the questionnaire um it will really test us but if the people don't have the information before they get the, the survey 
They'll have it when, when they receive it. They'll have an opportunity to educate themselves if they choose. Well, we can't make them do it. But, you know, this is by far the best and most efficient way to get the entire, you know, cluster of information to them that we all agree is needed. Thank you. Thank you. Bruce, you heard us comments. <laughs> I know you took some notes. Yeah. I've got them up here. What are you hearing? What, how can we help guide you? Uh, well, I just want to add that um, even though you're, you, you are getting a lot of good feedback, and I think one thing that this survey will bring to you is we include, again, a comprehensive section of demographics classification information so you know what groups or what segments within this town are making the comments that they're making. I think that is one of the critical aspects of the survey because you can get all kinds of you know, anecdotal information, you know, at, at, at sea salt or through Google Docs or something like that. But you don't know if it's the same person saying things 50 times over or if it is, in fact, different groups. And this is where you're going to find out what the different segments in town, like what are retirees saying versus full-time employed people? What are the um, 35 to 44-year-olds saying versus the 65-plus-year-olds? And that's critical to find out where you are with the town as a whole, because what you're, in my understanding, what I would think is you're trying to come up with a, a solution that the entire community supports, or at least the majority of the community supports. So it's absolutely critical that you hear from all those different segments. Um, I heard that, that whereas this is not a vote on what option um, people vote for, or uh, people select, I do think it's it's time to, you've done a, a tremendous amount of work and it's time to get an idea as to where people are with the various options. You know, which options would they support? Maybe not, I wouldn't have them select the number one option, but which of the three options would they support and why? I think it's critical to get that information. But they could select more than one. Yes. That would be good. Plus, no preference. Plus, I don't know because I, I have, don't have enough information. Yeah. Um, Is there any way about it? Like, could those potentially be like. Is there, is there a way to ask? Is there a way to ask this question that doesn't end in a straw poll? What do you mean by that? Like, I don't know. Instead of, instead of having the three there and say, pick which one, have three questions. Like, how do you feel about option one? How do you feel about option two? How do you feel about option three? So instead of having a vote, you're asking people how they feel about the existing questions. We're probably going to get an inference from that type of question about what people support, but you're not going to have a situation where we had a preemptive vote. Well, I, I mean, I would set it up where you rate each of the, the three options and then you have them select the ones that they would support. But that's a, that's a, that's problem. a struggle. Well, and you can, you can write the question such that emphasizing that it's not a vote, that we're just getting more input about this. But I think at some point, you've got to have people figure out which one they would support. They, have to, they, wait. Wouldn't. they have to wait. They have to, we have to, that's the critical question. We just want and you have to know why. You have to know why. Absolutely. Because if you tweak yeah. that, so like do, I guess do, the do let's, I let me just hold on a second so we make sure these people are back. Everyone back? Please, are you back? Can you hear us? Okay, good. Thank you. I don't know who we talked to. The purpose of our committee is to take everything that we know and make the decision we think is best. Mm -hmm. And there are no fault of their own. The public, by definition, is going to be less informed than the people who've been deep in the weeds on this for mm -hmm. a year. And so I think this, the, the, the nuance of are we gathering information to see what we need to do in November to, 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 to make the choice we think is right successful? Or are we trying to use the survey to do, I think, what the committee's work is and make a choice for us? What you've done is you've put different scenarios together. Think of it as a new product development thing. Okay, so you present them the new product and they select what they want, and then you follow it up with an open end saying, please state the reasons why you chose, the, why you support the ones that you support, or why don't you support any of them? 
And that's where you get your feedback. If you have a question like we had in the first, you, you really can't have a question like we had in the first survey where you said, well, did you understand this problem or did you understand that problem? Because that's a leading question. And I think you're to the point now where you want to get some top of mind and really gauge where people are without being fed information like that. I do understand the um, the need to about have people evaluate their perceptions of how the communications are going in the process of SBSAC is going through. So I think that's important as well. Can I ask a question? And then after that, I'm going to go to Michael. Go ahead. Then. Um, now you make me forget Sorry. my question. Jeez, I'm crow. Send the batting over I, I, here. I, okay, let me get back on track. Um, okay, where was I? Okay, so even if we do ask which, which one would you support, that tells us that if we understand information about how they answered about the other option, that we go, there could be opportunity to educate a bit more and do a shift. Even if that goes, I can answer a survey and go, you know, my preference is X, Y, Z. But then you get more information and you go, oh, you know, maybe I can go there. Right. But do you, you see what I'm saying? Absolutely. Okay, cool. Thank you. Michael, online. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I'm hearing some good dialogue here, and I, I think it was Caitlin that was mentioning kind of the more individualizing each of the three options into like their own section. So maybe you have a section for each of the options, and a question for each one could be, would you support it, or how strongly would you support this one? Uh, so you're not necessarily voting for one, but you are kind of just expressing how strong your opinion is on it, and if you would, in fact, vote for it should it be the option or would you support it? You could also uh, provide some direct feedback about each option in the section for each option, if I'm explaining my thought process correctly. Um, read too much, I won't do the survey. Sure. Thanks, Michael. It's gonna okay. be a short survey regardless of it compared to the first one. Cindy. So I have a question for Bruce and just like how I heard what you said about being careful that you don't want to have a leading question or something that might influence that and you're saying you want to gauge where people are about influencing that. If one of the objectives of our survey is to educate and inform people, how do you balance that with, I mean, I think the purpose of our committee is to educate and inform primarily. And we're all saying we don't want this to be a straw poll, and I guess I wouldn't want to see them. Then I don't uh, honestly. If if I know that someone is making a choice without, I, I want to know if someone's making a choice without any other knowledge of the project, and I think we need to to gauge both. So how do you balance that? Well, you are educating the public just by the mere fact that you'd be sending them information on the three options. Okay. And I mean, a question that would be very interesting to ask people, but there's really no way you can get an accurate response to it is, did you actually read the brochure that came with the survey? <laughs> Yeah, um, but that brochure is the education, isn't it? Right. And so that's an education piece, but I guess what I'm saying yeah, is, I is by make people more likely to read it. But the, no. I think so, that's good. Right? Let's let, let's let, sorry, sorry. sorry. I, I but but you're, I you're, you're, you're basically, really fast. you're basically pushing information to people to, at the, at the most critical standpoint, even more so than, than an article in the Courier. We call it forced exposure research. You want to do this work. Yeah, so, it, it, so just that mere fact is you, it's a big education piece. So, I mean, the, 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 the investment with the mailing isn't just about getting a survey out. You've just got a ton of information to people who might not have searched for it otherwise. So going back to the example my guess when you're used with sort of a individualizing each option, just hypothetical. So, so we've got, you know, option X, Y, and Z. We're on option X and it would say, Option X will improve traffic flow and security, but it doesn't provide a new loop. Would you choose this option? And then option Y will, you know, increase space by X. So is there a way to, I mean, and I, I guess I would, 
we I would say use the same criteria, but indicate which issues are solved by agencies. I don't mean, know. Is there a way to do that sort of thing? Well, I, I think in the descriptions of the options, you state what problems, what issues are being resolved with that particular option, and then have the respondent talk about the option and you always have an open end and just see if they picked up on that stuff. Um, it's a much longer survey if we go into the detail. I mean, um, uh, yeah, so my initial thoughts about this was basically a, a two-page survey. And what I'm hearing is this is, this is more than a two-page survey. Whether it's a bigger than a two-page survey or whether there's more educational information included in what we mail at. That may be what we have to figure out. Corinne, I saw your hand, but now it's gone. Um, I just, I think that Michael and Summers, um point is interesting because if you ask for each option, how, like how enthusiastic or, or how much do you support option Y, uh, it might give us more informa information than just selecting which do you prefer because we could kind of gauge people's enthusiasm about each option could be interesting. Like a one to 10? Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah, like a one to 10. Kind of similar how in our last survey, we had a whole grid of questions that were like, you know, what do you think about, you know, like safety for this option? What do you think about wayfighting? You know, we had kind of gridded out a whole bunch of things. And the last one could be like, how much do you support or how, yeah, how much do you like this option could be interesting. We could also right. have questions of what are your concerns, sorry, what are your concerns about this option, uh, you know, mm -hmm. and, and that would help us figure out if we end up choosing an option, what are the concerns that are, what, 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 what do we need to, what, yeah, what, what do we need to make up? Oh my gosh, I can't talk this morning on that option if we choose it to get to the reference. Right. So the way, so the way we typically do it is we actually do break things out just as you're talking. The only reason I hadn't gone that way was because I was thinking real estate in the questionnaire, it's unfortunate, it which we don't get at unless, unless you're willing to add a page or two to it. Because what we usually do is we usually do grind down into detail on each of the three options. Get a rating on a scale. I'm a huge believer in getting a rating on a scale. Um, the question about the concern, well, I would, I would have, you know, get the rating on the scale, have a, a, a respond to why they gave that rating to the option. And then you can ask them afterwards if you want to, if you have concerns, hopefully that would come out in the reasons for why you rated a particular option the way that you did. But what I would do is after you go through each of the three options, I do think it's valuable to have people select the one option that they would support the most because then you have a trade-off and they have to make a commitment. And it, you just word the question as best way you can to say, you know, this is not a vote. I don't think that's and possible. But, I think, think, but the way I, you just worded it, what would you support the most yeah. is, is a most I don't really want the answer that. But I said, sir, I we, we, live, we had a lesson we were, uh, I'm sorry, a couple of weeks ago, I'm sorry. That, I mean, I've been going, I'm a Cub Scout master, since the Cub Scout master, and I spent, after was it, three weeks ago, we did the straw poll, whatever you want to call it. I spent half my time working with the scouts and the other half talking to parents about why we did not even discuss option G. So that's my work. If we, if we, I'm not so worried about the answer. I'm worried about the perception if we don't do that. We have a lot of pissed off people that fill, fill kind of fill out that survey. What am I saying? I think it's a survey. A survey. We, we ask for people's opinion. It's my opinion, opinion, that's a survey. Or however, however you want to work, whatever it was, you would be asked to get out of the habit of calling that search. What was it? Feedback, feedback mechanism. mechanism. The feedback mechanism that we used, that people asked and gave us a third of the people at least said that they wanted G, and we kind of pushed it out, which probably was the best idea because it's not financially feasible right now, but we, we, that's, what I'm, that's what I'm worried about. If we, if we take this and people go, but we wanted the, a good majority or a good segment wanted that. 
that's where I kind of worry that we, we go with this. I would like to see a number on it so we know, okay, this is the pulse of the town, or maybe maybe it's somewhere in the middle. So so like, let's call Michael, Cindy, Lynn, Caitlin. Michael, did you have something to say? Are you good? All right. Cindy? Um, so going back to why we wouldn't want the answer to that question, I think part of the reason I wouldn't want an answer to the question, and this one is a survey, um, is that just like the seven the, of the three options we ended up with from seven, none of them are going to look like they were when they were seven. They're more. We've got a B plus and a C minus and an E3 and a and we're going to put out three options. We're going to get feedback on those three options that are, you know, and we're, and we're going to end up with like F2 or something, or, or no, sorry, Y2, <laughs> you know, whatever it is when we're done. So I fear that saying, here are your three choices, which one do you like? When we, we know that whatever the end game is, it's probably not going to look like any of them because, I mean, it'll be in the ballpark, obviously. In the ballpark. It'll be in the ballpark, but it's going to be just like when we went from seven to three. We are going to use the feedback in the survey to say, well, oh, they really like this about our, our C+. Plus, and is there a way that if we scaled that E a little bit, but still included this piece from C plus, and those are the things we want to be able to do. And, and so I fear that if we say people choose one, we're not going to get feedback on their choices to improve. Can, can you on that? That was loud. Okay, okay, good. Oh, me, let me, let me. I don't want you to forget. I will because I The way I envision it is that we've got different sections at these three options, and we're going to have them scale one to ten. So, and then we're going to ask why, or you know, is there anything you might change? Then you get down to of all of those that you have looked at, which would you most likely? support and why and if you then know why um then you can go back and start looking at all of that data relating it to the why and say you know if we tweaked similar to what you're saying Cindy, if we tweaked b plus and or if we did this to e3 then we could get this group to move from B plus to E3. That's 100%. Yeah, so and get there without asking the question. Right. Yeah. So, so think of it as an iterative process um, where you're you're getting you're getting closer and closer and closer. And actually the thing that just came to mind, and I've got to remember what kind of tea I had this morning. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I was, I don't know if you ever, <laughs> it's actually red rose tea. Maybe they snuck a little bit they in there, did. I don't know. They did. <laughs> but I was thinking of, and I, I'm sorry to throw this out, but I was thinking of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Exactly. And that's basically where you're going. So when you do, when you look at each of the options and give them a rating and get feedback on that, you're sort of in that middle segment of think of the pyramid. And then when you get done with that section, then you ask them, okay, so which one, which one option would you support and why? And what that which does. Most likely. Most likely. Most most likely. likely. Right, I'm not, we're not, yeah. But why? I'm why just you that. But then, but then you get people to have that final trade-off on all the options as to why. And that just gives you a hierarchy of feedback to, to then create the option that you're going to present. So we can move them into another option if we exactly. decide to go exactly. we, can't, we can't do it unless we know what their preferences are. I'm going to go to Tim and Chris. Go ahead, Tim. And then Caitlin and then Corinne. So this is the first meeting I've actually tried to do this from a Zoom standpoint. And I'll tell you, guys, when you guys are all trying to talk at the same time, it's it's uh, very difficult to to uh, to. Uh, so 
just as a little feedback, but one of the things that I think we we absolutely do need in some way when we're when we get all this information back on this survey um, to to Patrick's point when in November when he when he's leading his Cub Scout group, I want him to be in a position to to uh, uh, to be able to be happy about the fact that we got something approved. So somehow out of this survey, we need to have enough feedback so that we know which one of our approaches is going to be successful in November. So, uh, you know, if we, if we don't get that guidance, I think uh, it's going to be a big piece that we're missing. We need to, we need to understand somehow in guiding us to, to the, the one option we're going to all get behind because we need to get, we need to get both ends of the spectrum and all of us in the middle to get behind uh, this the the option to so we're successful so we need that. So like the way Tim just worded that question it exposes all of my concerns. We shouldn't in fact sorry Tim uh, we, we don't want the survey to tell us what will be successful in November. Exactly. We want the survey to tell us what we need to do to be successful. And in that's November. what Michael said. And, and yeah. but I think like what is the like and my I guess I'm truly wondering if we have like three sections like rank how much you support option a whatever a series of questions about option a that it, that specifically ask how much they would support option a or the like, scale that ask what their concerns about option a are, or i know we're not in a anymore we're in whatever um we're we're, we're gonna get and then you see that person A ranks A at a six, and they rank B at an eight, and they rank C at a two. We kind of got a vote from that person, right? But we don't have a vote. And I guess I don't understand why like that specific narrowed down question gives us something that we can't really extrapolate from the three, keep going up, from the three, from, from those three questions. Because at that point, we have more information about how the public is feeling, along with guidance on you know, how they feel about the other one, interrelatedly, how we can move, okay. versus having a straw hole. So if you have options A, B, and C, and people look at them, and they've read about them, and they go, oh, I'll write this a five. And then the next one, they go, yeah, I guess that's five, two. Oh, the next one's a six. So you just moved a smidge. Yeah. So then you go, what's that telling you? Okay, what is it that it's causing them to be like that? Then if you ask, what are you most likely to support? And they go, option, the third option, and here's why. And you look at the why, then you go, you know, that one they rank with a five. If we do X, Y, Z, that and that could really get us somewhere. I mean, I feel like if you see a five, five, six, you see somebody who's either easier to Bruce, so never get the option going to the Korean after Bruce. The, the, point that, the, the point that Penny, I think, is making is, and it's the point that I wanted to bring up, is somebody could go through the three options and give each of them an eight. Mm -hmm. and then say the exact same reason for the eight for each of the three options. So you want some, another question to filter out yes. what is at the pinnacle, what is the hierarchy. And an eight, eight is going to probably look wrong. Well, but it doesn't allow you the chance to put all the good things into one option. Okay, Corinne, then Patrick. Um, I had two thoughts. First one is I think it could be interesting in addition to asking people to select an option to ask them which option do you think best meets the needs of the schools. Could be interesting to see if they understand meeting the needs versus, you know, what they would vote for. Um, and then the second is, Bruce, I think when you started out, you had said that people would be allowed to select, select multiple options if they would you know, support B versus C, you know, and then now it sounds like you're more suggesting that they can only select one. I think it would be interesting if people would be able to select two, you know, maybe they really like two options, but not one. So 
that was my two thoughts. Thanks. Yeah, we sort of changed methodologies in the in, in the center. In, in the, when I first said that they could select multiple, it's when I was thinking of having less real estate on the survey. But if we have more real estate on the survey and we dig into each of the options individually, that gives you an indication as to whether or not they'll support each of the options. But I still think it's critical to then have them say which one would they be most likely to support. Andrew. No, you're, we want to hear from you. So if they ask you a question, please answer. So what one of one of my reasons I mean, the one of the reasons I don't think that we should have a please pick one of three. I like the idea of numbering them so we have a we have a good pulse is this. The, um, the problem is with building anything in a municipality is it takes time. We are going to, whatever these are, it will get assigned a dollar number. We really don't have a good 100% grasp of what that dollar number is, nor will we until they put a shovel in the ground and the contracts are signed. Because there are so many moving parts from now until when we're ready to actually sign contracts that that number could go up, most likely. It maybe can go down, probably won't. But that's something that we have to consider. So my worry is if we put a number on it and we ask which one do you want, there is going to be a good percentage of the people that are going to look at the number and go, I want that. Because that's what I can afford. They aren't going to look at the needs of the school. They aren't going to look at what that number does. It's just going to be a dollar cents number. And that's, that's my one worry if we do three. I really like the ranking system because that way we can kind of get a pulse. We can say, hey, that's gonna, this is gonna work because this number that we're gonna put out right now is not gonna be what the number is in November because it's gonna get kind of massaged and changed and things like that. So that's really my number one worry that as we move forward, if I put a number out right now, at least in November, we're gonna have that that one option is going to be so tightly down. These three options in a few weeks are going to be really starting to tighten down. But right now, we only have kind of a ballpark number of this is the option. And that's my worry that people aren't, there's going to be a very large or a good part of this, uh, this population are just going to look at the number. There's going to be a good part that whatever the school wants, the school gets. And then there's going to be everyone in the middle. But I want to I want to be able to educate. I'm curious more what people don't know or what they haven't learned or do they not care? You know, so I think that number, a number in the range is a much better way to go about it. It gives us a good direction. I mean, it's going to tell us. I mean, if one of them comes out, everyone ranks everyone at eight, and it's sixty percent of the community. Well, guess what we're doing? You know, so that I guess that's my number one problem is a lot. The large amount of people are going to look just look at that number. Michael, that's the point of the survey. We need to know. We needed to know what percent. In the first one, we learned something important. Something like ten percent are going to vote for nothing, no matter what it is, right? And then on the other side, there's ten percent that will vote for doubling of taxes. That it doesn't. That's the point. We need to know who these who is going to vote and where are they. It's about meeting them where they are today. And we are educating them in this. We're giving them all the information that we have. And the numbers are the best of our experts' ability. You know, the project manager, the architects. Yes, the numbers will change. Yes, the final design, when we go from three to one, will definitely change. It's going to evolve. But again, it's where we are today. This isn't a vote. This is where you are today. And we need to know where the person who doesn't care is. We need to know where the people who passionately care. We need to know where the people who are strongly supportive G, where are they today relative to these three? We need to know. You just need to know. You, can, can I jump in? Yeah. Just one you, you, could, you could get comments where when you're looking at each of the three options, you could say, oh, well, this is a great option because I like how there's more light in it. 
This is a great option because I like the fact that the cafeterias are, I'm making this up, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and I like this option because I got little cubbies behind where, where students can go out and meet and so forth. Then you get to the question, so which option would you prefer? I prefer option B because it's the cheapest. You can get that response and I just think that is good input to say, okay, they like these three things, but we still, haven't we, we still need to be mindful of our budget and not that you want anyways and I, i'm just using that as an example i saw larry yeah i saw larry's hand and then i saw someone larry go ahead bring your hand still up i don't know if he's going to talk but i'm going to larry cindy and then we'll see who's next <laughs> oh okay well, thanks uh, chris um with respect to cost, I, I, I trust in our OPM and our architect to give us reasonably close estimates that will, I think, be fair and, and appropriate for this survey. I don't have concerns about that. It's going to change plus or minus a few million probably, but we're in the ballpark and we do have to identify costs because that's probably the primary reason that the last bond issue failed. And secondly, I think it's very important that we get a preference of the three. Um, however that's done, I'd really trust Bruce, uh, who uh, is an expert in this field, to get us to that point. And it would be useful to learn why people support one or the other. And then finally, I think there are a lot of voters that probably will say they don't know, don't have an opinion, or don't have enough information. But I want to emphasize, this is the most direct and the most efficient way to communicate the need and the options to every voter. And we'll have a fact sheet in there and everyone will have a chance to read that and make an informed response to the survey. Um, if, if we haven't done our job by the time that piece is prepared, then we, we really have to you know, take, take a, a, a full measure look at what we've been doing. But, I feel confident that we have achieved that and that that sheet will have the fundamental information that voters need. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Cindy? Yeah, and I, I, I do agree with Larry on the fact sheet. I, I think including a comprehensive fact sheet is a, an important and excellent idea. And also, Bruce's suggestion with the question of, did you read the fact sheet? Um, <laughs> <laughs> One point, and I meant to bring this up kind of in concerns earlier, one point we haven't, like, is, uh, so I'm thinking of the things that stood out from the prior survey. Another thing that really stood out is that people felt they didn't understand um, the tax rebel and didn't have that information. I know some of that information has started to go out to the town now, but I think it would be helpful in the survey to see if, do people know what their, you know, rebound results are, do they, are they come, you know, I don't know how we phrase the thing, but we want to gauge, do you know this now? Um, because before, we know no one knew it, and it was a major issue. So I think we've had a rich discussion, Bruce, just a second. I think you've had a chance to hear all this feedback, Bruce. I, I don't think we've reached resolution on that last question, you know, preference. You know. But I would advise, considering the time and, and input, and we still need public comment, that we consider, Bruce, you take what you've heard, draft, make a draft, and then next week we revisit the pinnacle question, you know, what preference question, I guess we're calling it. Because I'm hearing several people still have questions about that, and we need to gain comfort collectively before we include that. Penny. Go ahead. I was going to kind of say what you just said. I think we've heard, he's heard a lot from all of us. There's still a tug relative to the, you know, the preference question. And maybe what Bruce does is get a couple options in there of how it might be worded. Uh, but I think we do kind of have to put the discussion to rest because there's a lot of other things that we agree on. But I wanted to say, as we were talking, um, I'd like to consider a question that has to do with, uh, and maybe this with uh, knowledge. Um, have people, uh, have you attended um, SBAC meetings or forums? 
and how many, and did you find them useful? Because that will help us to determine how we communicate better going forward. Well, maybe yeah, there's like a how have you gotten your information about or how have you your yes. or um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we asked that question. <laughs> we asked. I don't um, know. Any question that we can ask? Where right. did you obtain information about? I didn't know you had a tool already. I haven't seen that. Oh, I was just, just scratching things together. Oh, well, who should have shared it with me? Um, the other question I have is. Um, you heard us talk about connection of knowledge and options. So you already got that. And you already got the one about how much you need to pay on a monthly basis. Okay, yep. cool. So we'll see the tool when. <laughs> so we have a draft for the next Thursday. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, we like it before like, that. Like, like, that's what I was saying. I was trying to think how much. Possible, they also get emailed like to all of the committee instead of being a side yeah, so, email conversation. So send the send it to the committee and I'll make sure it has practice. You can Chris and Michael if you want to like Chris and Jeff. All right. So I think we should like, consider the yeah. communication plan next yeah. meeting, considering the time of day. Yeah. Good to everybody. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. All right, we've accomplished a lot. Good to bridge discussion. Uh, time for public. Sorry, I, I apologize. Yeah. The next step for you to send a draft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. sorry about that. Okay. I yeah. told you to we have to already told them what to do. We're good, we're good. Uh, Thank you. Uh, um, Any all right, thanks. Moving to public comment. Can I say something? I just want people in this room to know that the finance subcommittee meeting got a schedule for this afternoon has been canceled. Thank you. Got the email, I hope. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, hey everybody, Rob Crowder, Rocky Hill Road. Um, I have one question about, or I guess comment about um, inclusion in the survey. I went back and listened and watched the January 18th SBAC comms meeting, uh, which I believe was the first time Bruce came back in to discuss this survey. And one thing, and Larry, we could go back and watch it, but I am gonna quote you here. Uh, at the 48 minute mark of the January 14th SBAC comms meeting, Larry said, and I do quote, I went back and watched it a few times, Larry, so this is, I do consider this accurate, everybody to watch it themselves. Vast majority of voters just looking at cost to them and taxes. So one thing I would like to make sure of is that when you're sending this survey, you're not just sending the overall cost because I think that is a scary number for a lot of people, no matter what the overall cost is. You should also be including tax implications as you all did on February 14th, the day before you voted from seven to three. Um, I think it's important, as Larry stated, that people know what their tax bill is going to be, how will this affect their taxes directly and not just say, well, this one's going to cost 65 billion at a million and this one's going to cost 100 million. Which one do you want? I think you need to be very clear or as clear as possible, as clear as the experts can get it, that people understand what their individual tax impact is. Because as I've mentioned before in these meetings, all those green signs all over town for six months or however long they were up were like 25% taxes, which is not the case for any of the current options that I have to imagine Perryman doing these revisions are not going to make it 25% or more. So I think having very specific tax implications will be helpful for the taxpayers of Cape Elizabeth to accurately vote or give feedback on these options. Yeah, thank that's you. a good input. Thank, thank you. you for your Anyone else? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Whoever um, wants to go first. Right. <laughs> Hello, I'm Bly Shaw, Eight Request Road. Um, again, thank you all for your time and just listening to this. I've been, I, I so bad, I, it's so hard as a participant not to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> Such a great discussion. So just you know, thinking about this survey, and I have some questions afterward. Um, I you know, I'm hearing I'm hearing that we need to have a straw poll um, and a desire to have people rank those choices. 
Um, and, I, and I hear the ranking of those choices. It sounds like there's a little bit of hesitation around open-ended questions. So if we're sticking with like that, you know, the, the multiple choice or, or something that's easily translated into data, um, there's a little bit, each option has so many different variables as to why somebody chooses it. Um, you know, somebody might be thinking, hey, that's just one less dinner a night. Somebody else might be thinking, I'm worried about my neighbor. Someone else is like, this is going to challenge my ability to pay my health insurance. And someone else is like, I haven't had kids in the system forever, and I've paid for all this other stuff. Why would I do that again? Somebody might be thinking, um, oh, you know, this environmentally, everybody knows you should do renovation, you should never fail, right? So there's so many reasons that people are going to feel one way or another about the options and their <laughs> understanding of that option. And so I think the questions are oversimplified, so call them what they are which is how much are you willing to spend? And you know, like what cost is palatable to you? And then as you were saying, um, you know, how do you, you know, what are the different ways of looking at that cost so people are actually able to digest that information? Um, and just to explain my passion, I come from this world, um, how we ask questions and the data that we get from those questions and then the actions that come from that data just matter very much to me, so I'm just coming from that place. Um, and so I, I'm worried that it's oversimplified. Um, and so the question that I walk away is, um, why must it be a strong hold? Or, you know, be, be blunt about what the question is that you're actually asking. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. So a couple of quick comments. Um, <clears throat> One of the things that I think you as a committee actually did that you haven't really documented as well as I would have hoped is you came up with sort of some decision-making framework when you looked at the options. And that's the framework I would hope that you would try to communicate to the public. It's not just first cost, it's long-term cost. There's a durability factor involved. There's a how much of our educational needs are we meeting. And giving people a framework, it's not when you walk into a car dealer, how much would you like to pay monthly? It's how long is this going to last? How long am I signing up for? All those complexities. So communicating the framework, which would you as a committee are thinking about cost, you as a committee are thinking about durability, you as a committee are thinking about educational needs and how it's met, is critical. So you have to worry about less about the options because if everyone's using the same grading rubric or agrees on what the, they're going to come out with a very similar result. And that's what you want to measure. Have we communicated how we think people should evaluate it and are they doing that? And that doesn't require any ranking. It requires you communicating the framework that you had. And then also, if you are going to survey options, which I'm I like the ranking, I don't like the straw poll at all, but if you're going to communicate options, you should have the option of doing nothing. And it should be ranked alongside everybody else because it's important. And in fact, I would consider saying, include that as the first option. How do you rank doing nothing? Because that gives people a framework. Because when you're going to get your car fixed, if it's not broken, you're not doing nothing. But we're sitting here now and we know the cost Part of the framework you came up with is the cost of doing nothing is high and going up. And that's part of how you communicate that. Lastly, on financing. Financing stuff has not been worked on yet, but you can ask people how they would like to receive the information, things about like monthly cost, things about, in fact, what I'd love to see is you rejected option A, which was just the minimum cost, right? But that's the least you could spend to like be functional. So I'd love to, myself, I'd love to know what's my increment above the minimum. This is what it would take to get my car back on the road. But that's dumb. I can buy this used car for this. I can buy this new car for that. What's my increment over fixing my radio for one? That would be useful to me. <clears throat> Finally, I think there's an opportunity in financing we have now to ask people how they like to see things financed. Should the town consider saving now to lessen the impact later? We, 
There's been talk about doing that, but we can get that view right now from the town saying, should we put aside money now to lessen the impact later? So we'll have to spread it over more years and, re and reduce the tax impact overall, whatever we do. Thank you. I, sorry, am I allowed two public comments or just one? Well, I'm trying to bring up Jen. Jen, I'm struggling to bring, for some reason, Zoom is not allowing me to bring up, bring you up. You can put your comment in Q&A, if that's possible. I apologize very much for that. Also, you can write into us at SBAC um, to give your comment. I'm really sorry. I am trying. Uh, we do have another comment in here. Um, we need to do it on our computer because that's the whole thing. Uh, no, because it's my oh, Zoom. I don't know why it's not working. This is from Al. Is that about the ad? No, the second one is about the survey. Okay, thank you. I was okay. reading the first one. I'm sorry. And I'll copy that to make sure we keep it. Um, <clears throat> all right. I think to John's point, when you think it won't, I know the, the insert. Just a second, Rob, I'll be. Yeah, no problem. Take it down. The information insert is going to be like a different discussion, but I think the information insert <laughs> needs to include options G and A. What's that? They need to understand. And, and frankly, I think we should still include, I think the info sheet should be like, this is what we rejected. This is the bare minimum cost of just getting your repairs. And this is what the two new schools would cost today that you voted down last yeah. year. Because I think that would put some of these other numbers in context. People have been checked out are going to see um, things that are still in the range of what was rejected last November. But they should understand that, that those options which cost as much as what happened last November are significantly less than what we would have gotten for that. And I think that's an important thing to explain why we might choose the, an option well, that, that seems reflective of what was what was rejected, but it has to do with financial reality. But I, I, I want to go to Rob so then for one final comment, then we got to finish up. One final comment. Oh, yeah. Just Sorry. with what Caitlin just said, I think it's a, just an interesting uh, person on the street. At this this morning at the bus stop, a neighbor mentioned that they had read my letter to the editor in the prairie the other day and literally said to me, Oh wow, they got rid of G. She had she, who is a person with kids, multiple kids in the school, did not realize that the SBAC had already voted G off. The other thing that I first wanted to ask is going back to that January 18th meeting, right around the 25 minute, 25, 6 minute, 16 second mark. Um, Bruce had mentioned that there is a way to use that rating system he discussed as a gauge to people's education and awareness. And so I just want to ask and make sure that that's still possible that in addition to them, you know, uh, ranking their choices of the three remaining options, is there a way that they could rank, hey, how much do you know about the need for a cafeteria? How much do you know about need for this getting replaced and rank that and that may also uh show a better view of how well educated key taxpayers are so what's going on thank you that's it thanks all right jen just typed in her comments thank you jen i do again apologize for that So should we, uh, should we read this just so we have the yeah, do you want to go ahead? track everything? So uh, first question is along the lines of transparency, Michael's letter uh, for paper on needs not available. I think that's referring to the press release maybe. Um, and neither are communications between SBAC and Portland Research. And then the second one is along the line of education, consider separating out cost of repair so that people understand the base cost. Um, okay. She also said long-term implications. I don't, would you read that? Oh, no, I don't think I understand this. Long-term implications, I don't trust. It can't only show three-year impact. Um, and then January meeting with Bruce, he said that information insert will buy a survey, which is true. Now you're afraid to insert important understanding. Thank you, Jen. Penny, you want to say something? Then we're going to yeah, I just it. wanted to ask a question. I know we talked about uh, options uh, around how we deliver this tool to the citizens. 
I fill out a lot of ag surveys all the time and I receive them in the mail and I have my little code and I get to go online and answer it. Do you have the uh, ability to do that? Because I can only, I have to put in my code in order to get to the survey and I'm able to do it online. Um, so, I mean, you can get a code just that, that, get, that allows you to get into the survey. Um, but you can't tie a code to a survey on one that got mailed out. Correct. You're not like the federal government. <laughs> they do this all the time. I, I don't know what they, they do or might do, but. Yeah, well, uh, I, I agree yeah. it needs to go to every voter, but I personally am an online person, so uh, I'll fill up. So we have the QR code to get you. Yeah, we have the QR code to scan it. Go. Are we going to be able to do both online and paper? Mm, well, I thought it was one or the other. The, the, the proposal is one or the other. I would say we bring that up next week. Can you? Does that okay. impact? I think we can discuss that next tool? week. Okay. However, we need to get, we basically have two weeks to have this ready. I know, and I want to get to the tool. I, and the I, other piece, I think hopefully next week. Well, here's my ask is that Bruce can get a draft out sooner rather than later. Okay. Try to work through that and sort of have that essentially final by next Thursday. We can briefly discuss it. But what we also need to spend a lot of time on is what else is going. It's a huge opportunity to inform. Um, yes. We already have a lot of materials sort of in the works, the, the, the needs matrix relative to yeah. the three options, um, the, the, the graphics, the, the obviously the, the, the cost implication and how we want to present that is super, super important. This is a huge opportunity. If we're thinking the next meeting is going to be a, a, an okay survey. Maybe we need to have an extra meeting next week. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm feeling like, I don't know if I'll be in a position. My to, ask uh, is let's go through email for now so we don't wait till next Thursday. Yeah, I don't so wait till next thoughts Thursday. and questions, etc. We, we don't have an SBAC full meeting next, next Thursday. Okay. I don't know if I'm just throwing this out. We don't know. If rather than do an 8 30 in the morning that we do a longer or longer meeting in the afternoon, I mean in the evening. So I don't we'll, know. Mike and I will talk about I just I want I want to address the process and transparency in this because I have heard and I, it was one of Jen's comments and, and there has been concern in the community about you know work that's been done to date with Portland Research Group and um, I know as committee chair I haven't seen any so I'm just hoping that any communications related to kind of planning this or any other work with our consultants that we're doing a good job of keeping the entire committee in the loop, keeping the public in the loop on, on what's happening. Is there any concern? I haven't seen any public comments or. I think that when Bruce sent his email, and I know this is like, I think with the committee members, this is for the community committee members, it's like a different set of rules, but like everything I send to the SBC, like everything that I send from my people to the school email is like so level. And so when you forwarded us that email, it was clearly inferred that you guys had been talking, and that and we discussed that last week. That we, I would be, but I, I guess it's the effort to have those types of discussions all also be posted in the public correspondence and the websites that people think everything's going to up and up. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and, or at, at a minimum, when you're having the conversations, copy me, Chris, and you know, Chris or Matt, um, or the committee chair, just to make sure that. Everyone's aware, and if if you're including Chris or Matt, if there should be a follow request, they yeah. have they have it and are able to comply because then you can no, see that, something that makes, that makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, oh, All right. I, I just hadn't heard that there was concern about. I don't know what the concern was. But okay. uh, Thank you all very much. Thank you, Bruce, for being here. Have a good day, everyone. See you at six thirty. <laughs> Thank you, members of the public. Appreciate it. Bye.